welcome once again to this channel in today's um, uh, tutorial so in today's discussion we'll be looking at letter physics where we'll be considering thermal physics we know we have five sessions in the YC syllabus so we are looking at thermal physics in thermal physics we'll be considering gases now in this particular um, studies as well I'll be giving you mnemonics to help you understand and memorize uh, and be able to recap or recollect things easily. So physics is very very easy as I tell my students physics is easy. So that's that you have to know some little techniques and mnemonics and tips so that you can able to pass your exams. So in today's discussion we'll be looking at gases. When we talk of gases and um, we'll look at the equation of gases as well. So in this discussion we'll be looking at um, the equations of gases we'll look at the ideal and the real gas then we'll look at that of um, the kinetic theory of gases and then we'll run up a little on that topic kindly subscribe if you have not so that you enjoy these mnemonics and tips so you can understand physics in a more better and easy easier way all right so let's start with the equation uh, equations of gases so when we talk of equations of gases there is a question they can ask you i think 1998 or so um, there, there was a question where students were asked to define or explain equation of state so when we say equation of state equation of state it's just a relation between PVT. So we are saying it's a general, it's a general relationship between pressure, volume, and absolute temperature of a gas. When we talk of absolute temperature of a gas here, we'll be looking at the temperature in Kelvin. So there are equations that we have to look at, how these three things relate. And so if you look over there, I've given you some mnemonics over there. Please subscribe if you have not. The mnemonics there is one, boys at VIP. So we look at boys at VIP. Then Charles vote because Charles, who is a boy, has voted boys to VIP. So boys are VIP. Why? Because Charles voted. So Charles vote. That's a second mnemonic for the equation. Then pressure pot. Pressure pot. These are the three equations we have to remember. And the fourth one, we look at the general equations. What will be will be relating all the three things. So we want to start with the first one. The first one is Boyle's law. We call it the Boyle's law. Boyle's law. Boyle's law. And this Boyle's law. Remember from the mnemonic, boys are VIP. How do I remember? Boys are VIP. So the VIP them. So if, you, if they give you a question like this, and you have to remember, boys, law. Remember, boys are VIP. Boy, to be a boy, you are VIP. So boys are VIP. So VIP. Now, what does it mean? It means that, now, at a fixed mass of gas, look at it. Which are more than three things, which of them need I bring here? It means the temperature. So temperature is constant. So they ask you to state the boys' law. Remember, boys are VIP. So, what I have to say that it means that the volume is I it means inversely proportional. The volume is inversely proportional to the pressure. That is it. So, the as you state boys law, boys law state that what the uh, volume of a given mass of gas, the volume of a given mass of gas is inversely proportional to the pressure at what constant temperature. You see that here among the three things we didn't talk about temperature. So they ask you to remember to state boys law. Remember the at, uh, at a given mass of gas, at a given mass of gas, because we are looking at the mass of gas. So at a given mass of gas, the volume is inversely proportional to the pressure. The volume is inversely proportional to the pressure. So we are saying that at a given mass of gas, at a given at a given mass of gas, given mass of gas, what the volume, the volume. Is what inversely, inversely proportional, inversely proportional to what the pressure, inversely proportional to the pressure at what? What is constant here? At constant temperature, at constant temperature. So if you are able to remember, boys are VIP. So here VIP it means there is no T there. So at at, at a given mass of gas, can somebody can say the volume of a given mass of gas? The volume of a given mass of gas is inversely proportional to the pressure at what constant temperature because if you look at this equation it is temperature that is known in this equation so remember vip so this boy's law if they ask you the first one boys are vip so boy's law boy's law that's what this is the equation for boy's law all right so as i was saying so boy's law um we said uh boys lost that what uh, if i might vip the volume of a given mass of gas is inversely, I hear, inversely proportional to the pressure. Now, we have to get an equation from this. Because we said the volume is inversely proportional to the pressure. Now, let's bring an equal to sign here. So, we can say that 
So we bring an equal to sign here or a constant. So V is now equal to what? K over P. Because we are bringing an equal to sign here, we bring a constant of proportionality. Why are we bringing a constant of proportionality? So that in case they give you two gases, the initial and the final, you can relate it. So let's make K the subject. If you make K the subject here, you are going to have PV is equal to K. And so therefore, if you are giving two gases, we can now equate it. If K is equal to K, then you can say P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. Is that okay? Remember, we make K the subject. So you can say P1, V1 equal to P2, V2. So that means that the P1 here will be what? The initial temperature. So here will be initial pressure, the initial volume. And this is going to be what? The final pressure and the final volume. So don't forget this one. Anytime you are giving two gases, maybe the initial and the final, this how related the two of them. P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. But P1 is your initial pressure and V1 is your initial volume. Whilst P2 is your initial pressure and V2 is your, uh, P2 is your final pressure and then V2, V2 here is going to be your final volume. So this is how you're going to relate it. Don't forget Boyle's law. So this is Boyle's law, stating that the pressure, the relation between the pressure and that of the volume. So we'll be given questions where they'll give you the final, they may give you three out of these four parameters. And so you make one of them the subject and then you can be able to solve here. Let's look at the graphical representation of Boyle's law before we look at some questions under the Boyle's law. All right, so if you look at this um, um, graphical representation, the pressure and the volume, yes, you can see the pressure, when the pressure and then the inverse of the volume, yes, the graph will be linear, but then if the volume as so if you look at the equation, volume and this is inversely proportional, yes, so it's true, so it's going to be, Yes, it's going to the volume increase as inversely it's inversely proportional to that of the pressure. But if we didn't say the pressure is directly proportional to the volume, so as the pressure increases, the volume will decrease. So we can have the graph to to do what inversely this inverse graph. While the pressure is increasing, the volume is decreasing. But when the pressure increases, one of one um, the inverse of this will also relate the same. So this is a graphical presentation of Boyle's law. Alright, so let's take some questions on this particular one. It said the initial volume of a given mass of gas is 550 centimeter cube at a pressure of 90 kilopascal. Calculate its volume at 75 kilopascal. Temperature is constant. We know that it is Boyle's law where temperature is constant. So quickly, they won't tell you that use Boyle's law, but we know because we are releasing volume and pressure here. It is Boyle's law that relates volume and pressure at constant temperatures. So quickly, write Boyle's law. We have P1. V1 is equal to what? P2, V2. Now, what do we have? What is our P1? The first pressure one is what? 90 kilopascal. That's the initial. And then what's our V1? Our V1, our V1 is what? 550 centimeter cube. We have that of the second pressure to be what? 75 kilopascal. But the V2 we don't know. So we are going to make V2 the subject here. So if you make V2 the subject here, we know V2 we are going to, be, going to give you P1, V1 over what? P2. So we replace the values. What's our P1? P1 is what? 90. And what's the V2? 550. Then what of our P2? Our P2 here is 75. So when you put this into your calculator, you will get 660, 660 centimeter cube as your V2. So that's the, the final volume. Alright, so. I think 1994 SSE, there was a question, question three, where students are asked to calculate a sketch a graph. So we say an ideal gas of volume 20 meter cube and pressure 0 0.5 newton meter square, newton per meter square is compressed at constant temperature, at constant temperature to, to five times its initial pressure. Sketch the pressure to volume diagram and then indicate the initial and final pressure. So this particular one, you see, the first question we have to do is to sketch the graph. I told you, we looked earlier on how to sketch the Boyle's law, the graph. I told you to sketch the graph, what is going to happen is that if it is pressure and then inverse volume, then it's going to be linear. If it is volume and inverse pressure, it's going to be linear. But here, the question is stating that you should calculate the pressure and the volume. And we said the pressure and the volume are inversely proportional, so it means that the graph is going to be inverse, inverse graph. And so the graph is going to be an inverse graph. So this is how I'm going to state the inverse graph. And then if these are pressure two, 
okay and let's see this there let's relate this one to do what let's see this one is going to be our pressure pressure one so this one relate that to get a volume so it's going to be volume two and then the end here is going to be v1 have you seen it so don't forget so this is the relating your pressure and your volume so this is how you relate your pressure and then your volume so this is the pressure two then this is the pressure one volume two volume one we we see this one is inversely proportional so this is an inverse graph then this is a pressure two so we relate it to find the volume two and if this is a pressure here pressure on this one pressure one you relate it and get your v1 as well so that's how we sketch the graph for pressure and volume diagram for this boss law now let's look at the second question the second question is we should find the final volume we know because it's voice law vip right volume is even proportional to the pressure so if you have two of them we have p1 v1 to equal to p2 v2 now we have to find v2 which is the initial the second or the final volume so v2 the subject will give you what p1 v1 over what p2 what's our p1 our p1 the initial pressure there is what 0 0.5 and what's that of our v1 our volume there was 20 then what's the pressure to pressure to was five times so that's five times p1 so that's going to be five times our p1 our p1 is what 0 0.5 so you multiply these two things and you see what you get when you multiply the two things so when you multiply the two you get um i think you get four four meter square so you are going to get four meter meter cube for this so you are going to get a volume here to be four meter cube four meter cube as our final volume so now there's another relation where they will ask you about narrow tube or a narrow board tube. So look at how to relate a practical way of using Boyce law when they give you the uh, kind of the capillary tube or the narrow board tube as well. All right, so here they can give you questions where you have to apply Boyce law. We know Boyce law. Um, uh, B, P1, V1, go to a P2, V2. So you are relating that of pressure and volume. So when they give you a question like this, they'll give you a narrow tube or a capillary tube. What happens is that they can tell you this is the dry air. Let's say this is air. Let's say this is the air here. This is air. Let's say air. Now, this tube, we, they can seal the tube with what? Maybe mercury. Let's say they seal the tube with mercury. The tube is sealed with mercury. Now, we'll have atmospheric pressure. Okay, we'll have atmospheric pressure here. We'll have atmospheric pressure. Let's see pressure here. Good. Now, in this particular scenario, now, we have to find the pressure and the volume if you are using Boyle's law. Now, they can tell you the length, the length of the, the length of maybe the dry air. I'm putting air here to represent the dry air. And then the mercury, the sealed mercury. So, if this mercury, let's say the mercury here is um, 10 centimeters long. Let's say the air column here is 20 centimeters long. Let's say that 20 centimeters. The air column here should be 20 centimeters. Let's say the mercury is 10 centimeters. The mercury is 10 centimeters. And then the air column is 20 centimeters. You can now ask you to find the atmospheric pressure. And for you to be able to find atmospheric pressure, now, this is how they can narrate the, 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 the question. They can tell you if the tube is held horizontal. Horizontal means it's this way. So this is horizontal. These two are vertical. This is horizontal. Horizontal. And then this vertical. So this tube, these two tubes are vertical. But then this one is horizontal. If they tell you the open end is facing upward, then this is going to be it. If they tell you the open end is facing downward, then this is going to be it. If they tell you the open end is facing sideways, then it means you are going to this is the, this is the way the diagram is going to be. If they tell you that it's inverted, instead of saying the open end is, is the open end is downward, they can tell you the open end the, the, the tube is inverted, means it's the open end is downward. Now what I'm going to do is I say if you are going to the top, you add. If you are sideways, sideways, remember side is the same. And then downward, you subtract. I think that will help you. What am I saying? Add sideways is the same. So they are the same. And this, let's, first of all, we are going to tackle, we are looking at both the which is P and V. We are written in pressure and volume. To find the pressure for this first scenario, the pressure is what? Going to be that of the mercury, the length of the mercury, the length of the mercury, let's say length of mercury plus atmospheric pressure, which is plus atmospheric pressure. Then, for the sideways here, the pressure here, we are seeing the same. So the pressure is the same as the atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure is the age I'm putting here. Now, if you come to the, when it's inverted, the total pressure here is what? The, uh, the atmospheric pressure minus that of the mercury. The atmospheric pressure minus that of mercury. You see how it related. If it's the, if you have that of the pressure, how to find the pressure first? 
All right, so that's what I'm saying. The first, um, if you have this particular one, have you seen it? We have to find a pressure. Remember, for boys, like going to use pressure and volume so they can relate it. Now, if this, they can compare this and this, they can compare any of these three, choosing, they can choose two out of the question. So I'm saying that we have to know how to find a pressure in that of the volume. You find the pressure, anytime you give this question and it's, the opening is facing upward, you add the length of the mercury, the sealed mercury, plus the atmosphere pressure. If it's the same, the pressure is the same as the atmosphere pressure. I remember, remember side same. But if it's downward, the pressure is the same as what? The atmosphere pressure minus that of the mercury. So here we know the mercury. So here the pressure here, going, total pressure here is going to be what? The mercury is 10. So that's going to be 10 plus H, which is the atmosphere pressure. Then here, what's going to the pressure? The pressure here is just H. We will not add the mercury to it. Then if it's the downwards, the pressure will be what? The atmosphere pressure minus that of the centimeters long when the tube is inverted the length of the column becomes 45 centimeters calculate the atmospheric pressure here we have to calculate for the atmospheric pressure so you have to know the initial and the final the initial one the open end is uppermost but the, the final one they've turned it upside down so it's now inverted so let's see how we can use Boyle's law to solve for the atmospheric pressure all right so for Boyle's law we know very well that using Boyle's law, we know P1, V1 is equal to P2, P2, and the P1 is our initial. Initially, we realized that if this is the tube, if this is the tube, what happened? The air column in the tube was what 30 centimeters. The air column here was 30 centimeters. Then the sealed, the sealed, um, the sealed mercury was 15 centimeters. The mercury here, let me put mercury here, 15 centimeters here, and the pressure here will be up. So this is the initial, this is the initial. Then the final one. Final, we know that it was inverted, so we have the air column was what the air column now was now 45. The air column was now 45, and the sealed mercury is still what is still 15. Then the atmosphere pressure, we don't know, we have to find the atmosphere pressure. So let's cut the initial pressure P1. The pressure here, I told you when it's up, when it's open and it's upward, you add that, so it means we are going to have 15 plus the atmosphere pressure for the P1. But the second pressure, because it's downward, we are going to do the atmosphere pressure, which is H minus what that of the air column the mercury which is going to h minus 15. let's find the volume to v1 the volume here is going to be what length times per section area which is going to be the length which is 30, uh, 30 centimeters than the area so centimeters than area will give the volume then the volume here v2 here is going to give you what's the air column there the air column the air column was 45 so it's going to be 45 times a so using the voice law p1 equal to what p1 v1 using p1 P1, V1 equal to P2, V2. We are going to have, you say P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. So what's our P1? Which is going to be 15 plus H multiplied by the area, the volume here is what? The volume here is what? 30 times A. We'll give you P2, V2. Yeah, P2 here is going to be H minus 15. What's the area? That's going to be 45 times A. And so if you multiply this one thoroughly, 
if you multiply, you're going to get you're going to get uh, you multiply this, you are going to get 450. For the area here will cancel the area here. So I'm going to get 450 um 450 plus 30 h 450 plus 30 h will give you what um, that of 45 h 45 h minus what minus um that of 675 if you make a the subject if you make a the subject from this relation you are going to get a to the what 75 75 centimeters mercury the 15 is mercury so that's going to be the answer if you make a the subject here you are going to bring this one to this side of the equation this uh, this side of the equation which is going to give you 15 and bring this one to this side of the equation. If you make it a subject, you are going to get it to what? 75 centimeters mercury, and that's the atmospheric pressure. So that's how we use Boyle's law to solve this one. I'll give you some questions so that you try your hands on it. In the next video, we'll look at the Charles law. And we look at Boyle's law. It says Boyle's law is VIP. Volume is inversely proportional to the pressure. But in Charles law, we are going to look at Charles volt. Or look at the volume to be directly proportional to the temperature. So follow soon as we move on to the next a video looking at the Charles law, the pressure law, the general gas equation, and that of what the ideal and real gas law, and then the uh, kinetic theory. If you have not subscribed, as I told you earlier, subscribe so that you can follow anytime I upload a video on the this physical aspect as well. Thank you so much for watching. All right, so let's take the exercise. If the pressure of twenty centimeter cube, twenty meter cube of a gas is 5 newton per meter square. If the I think if the final volume is 30, 30, uh, 30 meter cube, calculate the final pressure. The question 2 says that the pressure of a given mass, a given mass of gas, it's a given mass of gas, not give pressure of a given mass. Let's the So the pressure of a given mass of gas is 60 kilopascal at a volume of 10 centimeter cube. If the final pressure is 45 kilopascal, calculate the final volume at constant temperature. The question 3 says that a narrow uniform glass tube contains air enclosed by a thread of mercury 15 centimeters long. When a tube is vertical with the open end uppermost, the air column is 30 centimeters. But when held horizontal, the air column is 24 centimeters. Calculate the atmospheric pressure. So try your hands on this question as I said earlier on. And then you can WhatsApp me with the uh, solutions. Uh, via my contacts and then the, so the next video will be looking at Charles law where I said volts and the vote that means that the volume is actually proportional to that of the temperature we look at the pressure law where we said pressure equal to port and the general equation as well thank you for following up this time um, do have a nice time and don't forget to subscribe as well have a nice time bye